Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to the dependent samples t-test. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. The dependent samples t-test is also referred to as the paired samples t-test. And this is a statistical method. It's an inferential statistic that we use when we're comparing two related groups. So it looks at the difference between means in related groups. The null hypothesis for the dependent samples t-test is that the mean difference between the paired observations equals zero and the alternative hypothesis is that that mean difference between those paired observations does not equal zero. So let's take a look at the elements of a dependent samples t-test. So before I get into the elements here and the structure of a paired samples t-test, I'll set up an example that I can use here uh, for this slide. Let's say that we have a group of participants, let's say 50 participants, and we want to look at possible improvement in these participants on, say, anxiety. So let's say they have anxiety and we want to test out a treatment to see if we can create an improvement in the area of anxiety, how the participants experience anxiety. So before we administer any treatment, let's just say uh, the treatment's Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT. So before we administer the treatment, we test the anxiety levels of all 50 participants using the same measurement for anxiety, the same instrument. Then we administer REBT to all the participants, let's say for 12 weeks. After those 12 weeks have passed, we administer that same anxiety inventory again for all 50 participants. That's referred to as a within subjects design. And that's what you have to have for a paired samples t-test. You have to have two related groups. So the anxiety scores on what we'll call the post-test, the test at the end of the 12 weeks, are related to the anxiety scores given at the beginning. We'll call that the pre-test, the related groups. It's the same instrument and it's the same exact participant. So you have a pretest that's given to a participant, that participant has a treatment, and the post test is given to that same participant. It's a paired sample or matched pairs. So for a paired samples t test, you have two related groups. It is a within subjects design as opposed to a between subjects design, as is the case for an independent samples t test. We have one dependent variable, and that is the measurement, in this case, the measurement of anxiety level, that instrument that's used to measure anxiety level, that score represents one dependent variable. There are two administrations of the instrument, but it's still one dependent variable. In this case, anxiety level, and it needs to be measured at the interval or ratio level of measurement, otherwise known as a continuous level of measurement. So the difference between the interval and ratio levels of measurement has to do with how the construct of zero is handled. So the common example for interval is something like the Fahrenheit scale, or the difference between each degree, no matter where that degree is on the scale, is the same. So the difference between 50 and 51 degrees Fahrenheit is the same difference as we see between 100 and 101 degrees Fahrenheit. However, zero doesn't mean absence of heat on a Fahrenheit scale. If you look at ratio, you compare this to ratio, Let's use the example of measuring distance. 
So the difference between 5 inches and 6 inches is the same as between 12 inches and 13 inches. But if we consider 0 inches, that's the absence of any type of distance. The scale of inches has a true 0. Fahrenheit, which would be for interval level measurement, does not have a true 0. It has a 0 in the scale, but it doesn't represent the absence of the construct. So in a paired samples t-test, you need to have a continuous level of measurement, interval or ratio. The dependent samples t-test, the paired samples t-test, is often used for pretest, post-test designs. And that's consistent with the example I provided before. We have a pretest, then a treatment, and then a post-test. So you want to see if there's some sort of improvement as you move from the pretest to the post-test because you have that treatment in between. So you want to see if the treatment is effective. And to do that, you're testing the same participant twice. You have one treatment, but you're testing them twice. Now let's take a look at the assumptions for a dependent samples t-test. And you can see I only have two assumptions here. Uh, the assumption of normality. And this has to do with the differences between the pairs. So the differences between the pairs of observations are normally distributed. That's the assumption to conduct, that's one of the assumptions, to conduct a paired samples t-test. It doesn't, the normality assumption here doesn't refer to each of the variables. So it's not saying that all of the scores in the pretest need to be normally distributed and all of the scores in the post-test need to be normally distributed. Rather, if you take the pretest and subtract the post-test, that variable that would be created, the variable that contains the differences between the pairs, that variable would have to be normally distributed. To determine if that variable was normally distributed, you could use a variety of methods. Uh, one could be the Shapiro-Wilk test. That's a test of normality. You could look at the skewness. You could also look at a histogram. So typically to determine if you have normality, you're going to apply a few different methods. Now using the same new variable that I'm referring to, that's pretest minus post-test, the difference between the pairs of observations, we also can test this absence of outliers assumption. So that's another assumption for the paired samples t-test is we have an absence of outliers. And again, it has to do with that variable that we create, the differences between the two variables, the two administrations of some instrument. So we take that variable and we want to make sure that within that variable we don't have outliers. And there are many methods for determining if you have outliers in a variable. One fairly common method would be to create z-scores for that variable. And you're looking for a z-score that is lower than negative 2.68 or greater than 2.68. That's one method of determining if you have an outlier in a variable. A z-score is a standard score that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Now you'll notice on this slide for assumptions of dependent samples t-test that there is no assumption for this statistic of homogeneity of variance or homoscedasticity. This is an assumption for an independent samples t-test. It's not an assumption for a dependent samples t-test. There are sources that indicate that the homogeneity of variance assumption does apply to the dependent samples t-test and other sources that indicate it does not apply. It's my opinion that as long as you meet the normality assumption using the differences between the observations that homogeneity of variance 
is not an assumption for dependent samples t-test. However, it's important to realize that there are different opinions on this subject. I hope you found this video on an introduction to dependent samples t-test to be helpful. Thanks for watching.